Alright guys, chapter 9 is huge. 30 pages and it's almost all instructions. Do this, do this, do this, do this. But if you do everything successfully, uh, the first thing you'll do is you'll make the slime enemy um, and then you'll make him so he, you take damage, then you'll make your character flicker when you take damage, uh, and you also make the slime enemy um, change directions when he hits anything that's marked it with the tag of wall. So, like, I put these blocks in here, and the tag is wall. So when I turn this on, you'll see he changes directions. And then you animate him, so it makes him kind of like bubble up like that. And they have you make the prefab, but again, don't make the prefabs until the the, the item is totally done at the end. Because um, I did that, and then then it had me change the script, and then um, so my slime didn't work with the the pre the prefab slimes I have. So now I have enemy slime, then I have enemy slime one, and if I put enemy slime in there, which is what they where they told you to put that in, uh, let me show what happens. Oh well, now he works. That little schmucker. But before he wasn't working, so I must have changed something somewhere. Um, but again, I'm gonna kill him off, and I want enemy slime one, because you want them to bump and change directions when they bump, and then you want them to bump and change directions when they hit the wall. So you've got to do something in the script to any time that you hit something that's tagged, like this block that's tagged with wall, you want to change directions or if I hit something that, that's tagged with enemy, you want them to change directions as well. Alright, and then uh, obviously your player will take damage. Let me get rid of this one. And I'll jump my player down in there. And you'll see, uh, like he blinks. And that's as long as he's blinking, he's immune to more damage. And if I turn this off and click on player, you'll see um, my player has health. He has a health of six and zero coins collected. So if I hit this, and jump down and take a hit and then jump back up you'll see my health went down by one so now my health is five so make sure you test that and everything's working correctly alright so really personally I think that should have just been a chapter itself because that was like um, I want to say 10 or 15 pages um, just getting the slime to move to bounce off the walls to bounce off the enemies to add his animation uh, and then to create damage to your player and then to make your player flicker uh, so that was a lot of stuff going on but um, you not only do that but there's so you you create a movable platform uh, you create a another enemy that flies back and forth between two points uh, and then you create a spawn point so let me show you those real quick all right, here you'll see I got a platform and I've got two points and this will rise between the two points. Um, and then I've got another enemy and he'll fly between these two points. Uh, so if I hit play, and you can change the speed or you can move the points farther apart or move them up and down wherever you want to go. So again, you're going to create this platform. You're going to create the two spawn points, um, and then you're going to put the script in there that makes it go up and down. And then you're going to save that as a prefab, and then you're going to create this fly. And just to fly, like you can see, uh, he's got four different child objects underneath him. Um, so he's got the fly, and then there's en their fly enemy, and then there's trigger the damage, then there's the two waypoints that he's going to fly by. And then once you're all done, you'll save that as a prefab, then you can kind of add more later on. Um, and then you need to do the script so that he changes around. Um, and I think that was it for these two. And then finally, what you do is you create a, um, a spawn point so that, like, you don't see the enemies here. Like, if I click on the slimes, there's a couple slimes over here. So there's four slimes that are invisible. But when the player hits this uh, collider box, that's what's going to trigger those. So watch when I jump through here. Then they, they trigger. Uh, then they'll come. Ah, I took some damage, and I can get away from. So that's in a nutshell. First, let me show you some things that I had some issues with in this chapter. Because I'm not going to go. The, if I went through the whole chapter, um, the video would be about two hours. Um, there was. Let me find that sucker. All right, was it player stats? Yes, player stats. Now, what's weird is if you go in the book, uh, they have you create the player stats. Um, script here and then later on they have you edit it like four different times but they never show you where anything goes so really just you I mean they can go anywhere um, put all your variables at the top and then just start popping in your function so there's a function collect coin there's a function take damage there's the function update a function start a function play hit you but you just keep adding the the functions to the bottom and that'll be fine but one thing that there was a mistake on um, was this take damage thing so when I went here 
Uh, your book, and let me see if I can find the page for this. So I'm on page 177 in your book. So if you look at page 177, you'll see here at line 30, this should be um, if this health is less than or equal to zero. Well, that doesn't work because it never triggers the thing. So basically, your guy stands there. He never becomes immune because his health is 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So his health drops like a rock. And then, then he dies. Um, so he dies fast. I mean, as soon as he gets hit, like his, his, you see his health kind of spinning down. So you'll need to change this line. And in, in my script, it's line 30. So if this health is greater than or equal to 1, you want that thing to go. And then if the health is less than or equal to 0, then he's dead. Um, and then when he's dead, um, obviously you, you, you can't move him anymore. So eventually we'll put in the, the death animation. We just haven't done that yet at this point. But hopefully we'll get that to that. Uh, we'll get to that sometime. All right, let me make this bigger. Now I'm not going to load this into the the Angel folder um, because I think it's important for you guys to type this stuff in yourself. That way you get to you get used to the scripting. But if you need help, here it is. I mean, obviously just bring up the video and hit pause. Make sure your script matches this. Um, and again, this was the only part was between here and here uh, that I changed in the script uh, to make it work correctly uh, because the stuff in the book does not work. All right, and then I'll scroll this up a little bit. You can check out all the functions where I put them. And that's about it. So again, if you have any issues and your your script isn't working when you're all done, whatever, just pause it and, and fix it. All right, another point where I had an issue was when I made the fly. Where's the fly at? Um. You're gonna get. He's gonna have two scripts assigned. He's gonna have the flight controller script, and he's gonna have the flight path script. They're both gonna be assigned. So when you first create it, um, I'm gonna uncheck this. You'll watch my fly. He's not gonna change directions. So he's flying backwards, you know, for half the trip. So you have to. The book doesn't say um, turn this on. Uh, it says something odd, and I was like, what the heck are they talking about? So if you change, click that button, should change facing in the flight path script then he'll change directions. Alright, then another thing, there's two different speeds listed. There's speed under flight controller and then there's speed under flight points. But as you can see, the flight controller speed, after I enter it, has no effect. So flight controller just defaults into the um, the enemy controller script and you'll see that when you get there. But if I go to the flight path and change his speed to 10, now his speed should increase. Yeah, you can see. So, kind of self-explanatory, huh? Change that back to 1.5, and we're all good. So that's what's kind of neat about Unity. Once you make the script, you get the options right there in the inspector, um, and then you can change it without having to open up the script and go find that, put that part um, and put that in again. And then something else, under main camera, there was um, a script added to this and I don't know where we got it from but it looks something like that and every time I ran this um, I got some uh, weird message about um, the scripted behavior is not assigned so if you've got this um, script that's assigned to player or I'm sorry, to the main camera there should be no script assigned to that so hit this and remove component and then that'll fix that so let me clear that out and then now, at this point, I think my only error message is something about the wall. So I need to figure out where that uh, assignment comes from. Yeah, um, wall's already registered somewhere else. So other than that, I think I've gotten rid of all my um, uh, error messages. So again, big chapter. You definitely want to get start on this one early. 30 pages, and it's all instructions. You're going to create a whole bunch of scripts. Um, flight path, flight controller, uh, you're going to... Uh, player stats, spawn trigger, enemy slime, uh, contact damage, um, so bunch of scripts and then obviously then you're gonna make all the animations you do an animation for your player so he flickers, you're doing an animation for the fly uh, you're doing an animation for the the enemy slime so lots and lots of stuff uh, so make sure that you start this chapter early oh and one last thing when you start this chapter um, don't import the the assets. Like, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, uh, I think up to this point we were always importing the assets. So if I did import package, um, custom package, and I need to go to desktop, asset files. Yeah. So if I do chapter nine start, 
let me show you what, like what actually kind of shows up. I'm really confused about these chapter things because if I if I wanted to start the project at chapter nine and skip you know chapters one through eight, all the stuff doesn't come in here. So like I don't see um, all the other scripts like the player controller and that kind of stuff. But everything that I created in chapter nine or I'm sorry in chapter eight shows up. In chapter eight, we we created the coin box, and then we did the the coins, and we did the coins popped, uh, and it keeps add, adding that like the the new level. So I guess I'm confused about this. You don't need to to import this now um, when you start chapter nine. Otherwise, you're gonna get two copies of everything. So I guess I'm wondering, like, let's say you skip a chapter. Let's say you know I, I end at chapter seven, so I'm ready to start chapter eight, and then for some reason I don't want to do chapter eight. I can just import the package for chapter nine start, and that would put me ready at chapter nine. Um, because again, you don't see any of the previous stuff. There's no um, player controller script. Um, anything that we've created prior to chapter eight is not in here. It's only the stuff for chapter eight. So again, I'm confused as all crap. So at this point, do not import those packages. Otherwise, you'll just get a double asset of everything, and you don't want that. So I'm going to cancel, and I'm all set. All right, so other than that, if you guys have any questions, uh, because this chapter is so big and there's so much stuff to do, I'm not going to give you guys a quiz this week. Um, and I think I'm just going to skip the lab so that all you have to do is this. Uh, when I ran through this, now it obviously took me a lot more time because I had to fix all the issues um, you know, with, with the script and whatnot. Uh, but so I think you guys should be good so maybe I will put in uh, a lab we'll see so again just check Angel uh, and do the assignments that are in there um, if there's none you know why um, it's just because this chapter is so big and also don't forget if you're behind in this you need to catch up right away um, you know we're getting near the end of the semester um, week 16 your final exam is going to be this project um, and this project needs to work all the way through so like when we created that checkpoint in the beginning so that when your player falls in the pit you need to have a pit at every point where the player can die uh, so anytime you have you know a water thing there should be a pit here so that if your player jumps in he dies and then you should have checkpoints so that if I die here I don't go all the way back to the beginning you know maybe I come back to somewhere over here you need to have those checkpoints and you need to have enemies in random locations uh... you need to have you know more than one fly flying around maybe add a couple of these uh, little platforms maybe make the platform go left and right whatever you want to do maybe make the platform go fast maybe make a, a bigger thing here where i can't jump over and i have to use that so make sure you start on this stuff now because not only are you doing the stuff in the book but then you have to apply what you learned in the book and those prefabs that you created and add them in else into the game and that's all due before the end of week 16. So I think now this, it's, it's week 10. Uh, so at this point, you've only got six more weeks, uh, and you've got to turn in a completed project. Um, and don't forget, your final exam is a big portion of your grade. So again, if you guys have any questions this week, make sure you email me. Other than that, have a good week, guys.